Hello, we're going to do a little uh, video uh, explaining striker triathlon total joint setup for a knee. Um, my name is Ken, I'm a scrub tech here at Lakeland Hospital, and this is my setup. Uh, it's also the same setup the other two ortho scrubs use um, for now. Um, this is just what we've come up with as our best uh, practice for having everything available and being as efficient as we can. Um, you'll see that we have two different table setups. We have a two-tier table here, and then we have a Phelan table that's uh, going to be draped as, at the patient uh, on the bed over here, pulled up to the patient um, when we actually started a case. This is a non-sterile setup, um, so you'll see me touching things, but um, this is all the stuff that you would see sterile along with the drape packs. We did have a table back there that was opened with drapes and things on it that we uh, get rid of once the um, stuff is taken off of it. So our basic setup is uh, as follows. Um, we try to, we're standardizing this to always be this way. So on your top level of this table here, you'll have your navigation tray. Instruments will be taken out of. Miscellaneous instrument tray. Patella prep and uh, trialing tray. Um, for this particular setup, we have the uh, crucial retaining and the uh, posterior stabilized um, femur trays and tray and the uh, plastic trials. Um, some of the doctors use both or switch back and forth. We have both of them available for the setup. And then you have your um, MIS tray three through six. Three through six is the most common one we use. We don't open the smaller and larger stuff unless it's needed. Um, so that's the way your, your top layer of the table will be set up. We leave a little space here to get out some of the most commonly used items and our impactors um, that we're going to use when we cement and uh, put the components in. Um, the only other thing that's on top of here is uh, the leg holder, foot holder down here, and the plate for it. And you'll see a packet of suture here. It just makes it visible for the nurse to see when we're counting and things in the other sutures down below. Um, I'm going to go over all this setup stuff first and then we'll go back through these trays and what we pulled out of them. A major bone tray always gets put in this position down here, first position, with needle magnet in front of it and sutures and if you have any free needles or things like that there. Major bone retractor tray next. Um, you can have miscellaneous things in here from one of your drill trays or some people put the cement in here. This is how we do it. Um, drain and um, stapler. Labels. I didn't put any labels on anything because we don't have anything actually on the field to label, but we do have labels made up for our cases. Um, this would be your cutting blocks and tibial locking base plate tray. Um, we took it off the top. It was up here. We put it down here after we get out the, we always put out a size above and below what we're templated at. Um, then you have curved and straight osteotomes here. Uh, total hip or total knee extras tray would always go here and then our drill on the end. Um, we put most of the stuff out of the drill tray. Um, that's up there that we're going to use. So scanning back over here to this table, um, we've gotten the things out of the bottom of this tray. I'm going to go into a more detailed video later how to set all the stuff up. Um, tibial clamp and cutting guide here with navigation tracker uh, attachment on it. Um, you've got two cut blocks for the femur here. You've got four different size tibial base plates. Handle for the for the femoral uh, cut block. Handle for the tibial uh, trays handle for your uh, box osteo or your box chisel and then all of your impactors here so this will be for second stage of the case we usually do femur first um, I leave all the things in these trays as you see they're two tiered so you have uh, more trials underneath for for uh, poly inserts um, posterior stabilized and crucial retaining um, have this one's out because that was the size that we were templated at uh, patella tray um, we always swap these out the bottom of this actually is what would come on top, but once you get out the instruments you need, it's uh, more efficient to just put this on top. You don't know what size you're going to use, so we've got out the miscellaneous few sizes that we were going to trial um, and ready to use and grab. Um, then your miscellaneous instrument tray has push rods in it, alignment rods, all your handles and things which we had back over here, and you can see that some of them are in, up here in this uh, area for quick use. Um, what's left in this tray is stuff that we are not going to access or use during the case 99% of the time. Same with the navigation tray. We've already pulled out what we need. Um, just because we do the patella, we cut the patella first but always uh, cement it last. 
I leave all my uh, patella trialing and cementing stuff back here. Um, a few of the surgeons we use uh, do gap balancing, so we have a gap balancing block back here as well as a sizer um, for the patella. Some of the doctors like the old uh, Scorpio patella sizing stuff and cladding clamp, so that's what this is. Um, and then here's the traditional one that's in the triathlon tray. So that's that basic setup. We have our drape stuff here. Uh, everybody drapes differently. Um, this is not all of our drapes. This is just what came in the pack that we opened for this demo. And uh, some C-section towels, stockinette coband, and um, IO bands. So we're going to move now over to the main working area. Um, this stuff here that's on this side is things that I pull from as I'm working uh, once we decide on sizes for the femur or the tibial side of things. I'll pull things from these trays as I need them. Um, if we put all that stuff over here, it makes this too cluttered um, during the case for, for working. So um, on the two-tiered table, which this drape will pull down and be attached to the sterile drapes that are on the patient and will create a little uh, area here between the patient and this table that is kind of a uh, safety drop zone area, if you want to call it that, that keeps things from being able to be dropped on the floor or anything because it's going to be uh, attached to the patient's uh, drapes on the bed. So we'll just quickly run through this stuff up here. Um, we've got a large and a smaller like baby DA ranger here, larger ranger chisel for you're doing your box if you're going to do a posterior stabilized knee. Um, Bovi suction tips, suction, uh, if we have cell saver, we'd have cell saver tubing here as well. Um, a small and a high capacity suction tip. Two Alice clamps in the bowl. Your Esmark and your Ace Wrap. Uh, our physicians use those to hold the ankle clamp back here um, attached to the patient. Um, light handles, this bowl will be used for, for uh, suture and, and things during the case um, when we have things cut off. Uh, Two pitchers for irrigation, your sets of lap sponges, Can you talk? and we'll go back across the rest of this now. Um, Z retractors, two different size uh, curettes. You have the other ones over here in your major bone tray. If you need them, you can grab them. Generally, we can get away with just two, a small and a, a larger size. Uh, I've got osteotomes here. Um, most of the surgeons use a large one for popping the tibial uh, bone cut off and then they'll grab it with a coker. So we have a coker here. Um, use a quarter inch curved osteotome often and either a half inch or five eighths one, oftentimes two for osteophytes and things. Bone tamp's always good to have up in case you need it, as well as an elevator. Uh, Dr. Edwards, some of the other physicians like to use these cokers to hold retractors in place with uh, bandages. So we have those up. You have your navigation uh, trackers here. Both of these are our instrument trackers, and this is your pointer, those would have batteries in them and they would be activated with the navigation machine that is separate from the patient non-sterile, which is not in the room. Uh, this is the navigation bracket. Uh, on the other video, we'll go through how to put all this stuff together. Uh, other uh, side of the navigation bracket is here. These are right and left dependent. This is actually set up for a left knee. Uh, navigation always goes medial, so I can tell by looking at this setup for left. Um, alignment rod. Slap hammer, uh, pin puller and pin driver for our short pins here that we would use to hold down our, our tibial base plate, or they can also be used to hold down their femoral sizer. Femoral sizer here is set up. Um, it's actually set up on a right. Um, but left to right, these are left and right dependent. The other ones are over here in this tray. Um, so you just set them up ahead of time for which side you're doing. Sizing guide, navigation screwdriver, um, this navigation uh, pin holder is for a tibial pin that we put on the top of the tibia when we're doing uh, navigation with that. There's also a bracket you can use. There's two different ways to do the navigation for the tibia. Um, he, this doctor uses the extra medullary with the, uh, the ankle clamp, which I have set up over there. A um, couple different pickups, whichever are popular for that physician. We like Ferris Smith um, and a Selman for cement. And then sometimes you have an ats and pickup up there also. Knives go here. I have a little uh, neutral zone of my own where I keep uh, drill bits, uh, things like that. I don't have a saw blade open, but it would be loaded in the saw. Navigation pin would be loaded in the navigation for the navigation because that's one of the first things we use. The other navigation pins would be here along with um, any other pins or things. Depending on which system, 
Smith and Nephew, Zimmer, uh, Biomet, um, we pull different pins and things out of the trays, and though whatever is used for that particular surgeon for those particular uh, cutting box or components, we'll put up here. For this case, this is all we need is these, and we would have uh, four threaded pins, and we'd have four smooth pins for holding the navigation blocks on and the different cutting blocks on. Um, and you have uh, different resort and retractors here that they use, two goulets, two, two um, prong rakes, an Army Navy, um, PCL retractors, um, right and left uh, prong retractors. These are marked right and left. Um, they're actual uh, lateral retractors. It says it on there, but we just call them right and left retractors. Um, and then a drill, a pin driver, um, and a saw. So that's the gist of the basic setup. That was uh, about an 11 minute long video. Um, there's a lot more to the setup, obviously, than this. This is just a quick go over of the trays. And if you're learning this system and how to set it up, this is a good way to get started. Um, I'll try to have some more videos later. And I hope that helps.